In today's journey, we take a crash course in intermediate starters, where we will go over some more advanced techniques and how they affect you. First, let's get the down and dirty method out of the way first. As some of you may know, some of the most frugal of brewers actually pitch new beers on top of old yeast from the primary fermenter. But what some people don't realize is that you can actually save that slurry for up to a week in the fridge in a zip top bag. Just remember, if it starts to swell up, you gotta burp it. This method is great as it lets you get newer generations of yeast, which can change the flavor slightly, but that also means that your results may vary from batch to batch. You will also only want to do this with like beers. Because there's no yeast washing going on, there'll be some flavors from the beers transferring from one to the other. So you don't want any stout flavors coming through in your lagers. One of the most popular alternative methods to making starters is to use a pressure cooker and can them. One of the best benefits to this is because of the canning method, everything is sterile inside, meaning it's ready to go as soon as we open this up. These are a lot like those cans of starters you'll see for sale at your homebrew supply shop. This particular model here in my hand is ready to pitch, meaning it does not need to be diluted, but because it's constrained to the size of a pine char, it's only really good for making a starter for one of our one gallon batches. A solution for that is to make a concentrated version. This next pine char actually has the same amount of malt extract in there as a normal one liter starter would. It will, however, need to be diluted with some distilled water before use. This style definitely benefits from some anti-foam agent to help the process, as it is easy for an overfilled jar to overflow into the canner during the process, because boil over can still happen inside the pressure cooker. Which is why this quart jar style is basically the philosopher's stone of starters. Not only is it a ready pitch that doesn't need any diluting, but it's also one quart, which is basically a liter, meaning it can be used to make a full one liter starter without any preparation ahead of time outside of sanitizing your vessel. Big tip though, boil your starter material before putting it into the canner to get the hot break over with. That mixed with the anti-foam agent will help avoid any loss. But this is actually the penultimate of this style. To make a wart from a partigile would actually be the best. This will be covered in a later video, but in short, a partigal is a free bonus beer that you can get when you make all grain beer by running through the mash a second time. If your runnings come up short, you can always just boil it until you hit your target, usually about 1040. And the best part about this method is that not only are you getting a quick, easy to use starter at a later date, but you're also not paying for malt extract ahead of time. One of those win-win situations. Just don't cool the jars too fast and don't freeze any that aren't freezer safe. But notice I said ultimate of that style. But if I had money writing on the beer, like at a brewery, I would only trust fresh wort for my starters, as there is a small chance that any wild yeast or bacteria could have started in there during the process. And that could lead to unexpected flavors during the fermentation, which is why a lot of breweries even go a step further and just buy more yeast, which is the equivalent to double pitching in homebrew speak. And I know they do it that way because I've seen them do it. Normally, a brewery will only make their own starters if they have a pretty well-equipped lab in their facility. Because we make one-gallon batches, our Erlenmeyers look more like this 1,000 milliliter here. These are also great for stepping up starters if you have to start with a smaller solution, such as if you harvested something from a pre-existing beer. This is called yeast harvesting, and people have done it to even big beers like Budweiser. Up next is something you've probably heard us say before, it's the anti-foaming agent. This lowers the surface tension of the wart and will make it harder for bubbles to form and stick around. So if you've been having a problem with boilovers in the past, whether during the actual beer brewing or just making the starter, this is a great addition to your process. And because all good starters should be decanted, there shouldn't really be any of this left over when you transfer it into your beer. Normally we wait until we've already had a problem with the boilover before we add it. This last one is probably the scariest to most beginner brewers. Yeast actually likes oxygen and we want that in starters. So get rid of that airlock because that's exactly what it's designed to do, stop air. This is extra useful if you're using a stir plate because that can actually suck in some of the air from the outside world. But the foam stopper will stop any physical debris or anything that shouldn't be getting in there from getting in there. Remember, it's alcohol that hates oxygen. And the only thing that's really missing from this setup to make it more advanced would be an aeration kit, which you can find an affiliate link down in the description. But if you're trying to make a decision between an aeration kit and a stir plate, definitely go with the stir plate, as keeping the yeast in suspension will increase cell growth more than aeration will. 
Plus you can always just give it a shake if you want to incorporate a little extra oxygen. But the last tip we're going to give today is that the stir plate doesn't need to be as aggressive as a lot of people think. And actually, unless you're using one of those giant 5,000 milliliter beakers, you don't even need one of the larger ones. And in fact, anything lab grade is pretty much overkill for the home brewer, or in most breweries. This stir starter stir plate is actually all you really need. It's cheap, efficient, and it's made in Michigan. In fact, they even offer you a diagram of how you can make one yourself. It's basically a box with a computer fan, some magnets, and a switch. People will often make one themselves out of a cigar box and some leftover computer parts. But for people who like visual aids, here is a demonstration of how vigorously you should have your stir plate running. This is about half power. You can see as we start to go into three quarters or higher, the whirlpool starts to move around and eventually it's going to throw the magnet. So you can see the benefit of not having it up too high as you could lose an entire day's worth of stirring if it were to fall off while you were at work. If this happens, just turn off the stir plate, recenter the magnet, then slowly ramp up to about mid speed. So as long as you already had a recipe for a basic starter, one down in the description if you don't, you're ready to start making more advanced starters and getting the most out of them. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you hate us, tell us why.